All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the seventh session of the Akagi game. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but we're finally back. So before we begin, uh, just a few quick announcements. So in case you were wondering what the schedule is moving forward, uh, we are hopefully going to going back to every other week starting this week. So next week we're off, then the week after we're back on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the other thing is that uh, if you haven't already figured it out or noticed, uh, supposedly the podcasts are now available on Spotify. So iTunes, Spotify, I probably should look into the other major one I don't remember the name of, but basically you can get this and every other game I run on pretty much any service that fits your needs. Uh, I think that's really it as far as uh, announcer announcements go, so let's just go ahead and go right in. Uh, Zarya, I believe you have the opening log today. I do. Personal log, Stardate 39982.1, Lieutenant Commander Zari Zarya recording. We've just arrived at Starbase 23, all is well. The visitor we picked up in the Rakar system, Siridise, has just disembarked in the to continue her journey elsewhere. It was certainly an interesting week. The crew always gets excited when there is a new guest aboard the ship, and Sierra herself seemed to want to know a bit of everything about us. I would think it would be lonely traveling by yourself throughout the cosmos, but she seemed to be doing well for herself. The Akagi is scheduled to remain at Starbase 23 for the next week for routine maintenance and general refitting. Luckily for me, this gives me just enough time to finish the last of the crew's follow-up psychological assessments as well as take care of some personal business during shore leave. The great thing about being at a starbase is that their more sophisticated communications equipment allows me to actually call home in real time. I'm looking forward to it. Alrighty. So, because I find it funny, uh, we actually are going to go to Zarya's office, where someone who has been blowing off certain psych evaluations is having theirs. So, uh, you two are in the Arboretum office, and you guys can take it away. Captain Miller, it's good to see you, as always. Hey, Commander Zarya, always a pleasure. So, we don't have much left in terms of your psychological assessment. I have a couple of pieces of paperwork for you to fill out, just some forms, uh, some basic tests, and then... If you have anything that you want to talk about, I'm perfectly happy to listen. And if you feel like maybe you want to take some time off on a regular basis and come see if there's anything stressful going on, you are perfectly welcome to. Well, thanks, Commander. I I do have to admit the the only thing that's been on my mind lately. I I've, I've been a captain for a long time, and when you you get to my age, you you sort of feel like you have a handle on what the galaxy is. And our recent encounter with the Klingons, well, I've lost a lot of people to the Klingons. Over the when we walked into that encounter, I, I didn't have a moment's hesitation on, on the situation, how to handle it. But I'd have to say that the Klingons, they reacted a little differently than what I was used to. And it, it did give me a moment of pause. Well, there's been plenty of changes in our own cultures over the years. Maybe they're going through one as well. For a race like the Klingons, a, a warrior race where battle is so ingrained in their culture, to see a shift like that is it's just not something I was expecting. Do you think the next time that you meet them, you're going to go back to how you were acting before? Or is going to change something in the larger scheme of things for you. Well, despite what Zines might say, I hope I'm not old enough to not learn new things. I, uh, I'll certainly look at it differently. I, I've always prided myself as a Starfleet officer of being open-minded and, and giving everyone a shot. I've just gotten so used to hating Klingons. Well, it's always good to open yourself up to new things. I know there's always more that I still have to learn, even after who knows how long. 
and it, it's it's funny it just it came so naturally to me and if it were any other situation any other person with any other species if i had witnessed the same behavior i would i would be very unhappy with myself or even you know repelled by it but looking back on it i yeah i'm just going to have to reconsider it i guess I guess even as evolved as our species has become, it's it's very easy to fall back into just natural patterns. And who knows? Maybe they're changing for the better, and maybe you're changing for the better. I think a part of me is always going to be guarded around a Klingon. I don't know if I can erase 30 years of Starfleet history in my perspective, but it's I, I will do my best at least to to give them a chance. It's not necessarily what happened in the past that's important. Because you're always going to feel some way about what's happened. But it's what you decide to do, no matter how you're feeling about it on the inside. As long as you're doing the right thing, I think that's more important. I think you're right, Commander. It's, it's easy to forget what our values are when, when faced with a situation like that. It's... First reaction when I see a Klingon ship is red alert, arm photon torpedoes, but that's not what Starfleet's about. I think that's probably a change for the better for all of us. And I would like to use positive reinforcement since he is here under my care. Mm -hmm. So I will copy that over for you because I always forget to do it. Nice. Do I make the present medicine task? No, I do that. I just wanted to make sure yeah, that that's... everybody was on the same page. Yeah, that's... Go ahead. You may certainly do so. And I'm just going to do it straight up. Okay. Uh, applicable focus. You have one. Psychiatry. You have one. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did the opposite of good. So that's awesome. A, Negative reinforcement. Yeah, like apparently, you know, you're saying all the right things, but Miller, <laughs> you don't really feel great about it. However, you want to flavor it, but uh, you must still have some sort of anxiety about it. It's definitely not dealt with. <laughs> So my personality has sharded now. The alternate personality, the evil Miller, is taking this conversation <laughs> for the future. Uh, One day I'll get this and I'll do it right and I'll remember to do it and then I won't do that. <laughs> I, I'll say if if I can take it away, LH, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. I'll say maybe the the, dis the 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 problem here is that maybe Miller might second guess himself the next time he runs in. He's not as completely confident as he might otherwise be. I think that's solid and could very well uh, be a very good role-playing opportunity. All right. So uh, with that out of the way, I do have a quick scene between uh, Riley and Zines in engineering. So uh, the two of you are going over the uh, planned maintenance logs at Starbase 23 and there's a problem. That problem, uh, I'm going to let you two invent on your own, but I have backup ones of my own if you would rather me give you one. Uh, well, Commander, uh, everything, almost everything, appears to be in order around here, but um, I... There seems to be some sort of glitch in the transport matrix, and I can't... I've had Mendoza working on it for weeks. I can't track it down. Well, seeing as how, as far as I know, we are going to be using that transporter to move supplies and things over, uh, I would say that should be a priority, no? I, I agree 100%, but... Mendoza and his team, they haven't, he hasn't been able to find anything. But anytime I run a diagnostic, there it is. I, it's just some sort of glitch. I don't feel comfortable letting anyone use this uh, transporter system until we figure this out. 
Well, I'll I'll take your concern uh, to heart, Commander, and uh, I'll double up on. And signs will pull a pad out. I'll double up on how many um, shuttles we're going to run back and forth, um, so that way we don't for mundane items, so that way we don't have to use the transporter. But once we get to uh, to the star base, then make sure that their crews also come in. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe a fresh set of eyes and a fresh scanner will give a better, uh, a better picture. I don't know if you've noticed this, Commander, but um, we're this is a fairly new ship, and we've run into a fair number of glitches or gremlins. It seems odd. Well, Commander, it wouldn't exactly be a Starfleet ship that's brand new out of space dock on its first voyage if we didn't have a ton of problems. It seems to be the um, going norm. Uh, I wouldn't know, actually, Commander. This is my first time serving on a ship that hasn't been in space for at least 35 years. Hmm. Wait till you see some of the old shuttles. Uh, it's a wonder they're still flying. Um, one, <laughs> one old engineer used to say, held together by bailing wire and sheet metal. I don't know if that's... <laughs> Uh, vernacular that most engineers use, but those shuttles are are some of those old shuttles are pretty bad. But just seems to be that once a ship gets out and starts flying around the void, then we're it'll start bringing itself together. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. Well, I'm going to keep looking into this. Um, hopefully, I can track this down because if if we get to the station and it's not working it's going to be a real pain in the butt for everybody around here uh yeah it, it definitely will be um uh, also if i'm going to be running more uh trips with the shuttles um um i'm going to take or i'll need to borrow for these trips uh ensign ensign zax um ensign jackson and no, I think that'll be it. I'll just pull two from you, so that way you can keep working on all the repairs. Uh, I, Riley pulls out a pad of his own and essentially marks off those names and so that they're unavailable. Uh, Commander, you got them. They're yours. All right, and I'll let the uh, the captain know, and um, as soon as we get in, let's... Other, unless there's anything else that's massively pressing, let's make that a priority. If you don't mind, I, I was really looking forward to. I heard that this starbase has one of the best margaritas in the quadrant, and if I'm stuck here fixing a transporter the whole time, well, I, I'm gonna go nuts. If you um, if you can't figure it out in the first twelve hours, uh, call me down here and I'll I'll order you to take some take some time off. <laughs> I I appreciate that, Commander. But just keep me apprised of any anything else that comes up, and um, uh, we'll we'll handle it from there. Will do, sir. All right. So there is a small time skip uh, where you guys arrive at the station, and pretty much minutes after you've arrived. Uh, both Captain Miller and Commander Zines, you are asked to report to the commander of the station, Commander uh, Zinros, and I will put that in chat. Uh, commander Zinros uh, is not someone you are familiar with on a personal level, but you do know that she is an Andorian. Uh, but she is asked to meet you in her ready room as soon as possible. So yeah, we will skip ahead to you guys arriving in her ready room. And uh, when you walk in, uh, you see that uh, Zinros is a little bit flustered. It looks like she's probably a little bit overworked, uh, under stress, more so than, you know, a station commander usually is. Uh, and as you come in, she says, Ah, Captain, Commander, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, can I get you anything? Hello, Commander. It's very nice to meet you. Uh, since you seem to already know who you are, sure, let's let's have a drink. 
Sure. Uh, she walks over to the uh, replimat and kind of looks at you for guidance on what to, you know, synthesize. Uh, for myself, I'll uh, pause. I'll just have a cold glass of water. So she says, uh, "Water, negative fifteen degrees Celsius," and it's it's at that flash point where if you drink it too quick, it'll flash freeze. But she picks up the glass very gingerly and hands it to you and says, "Best water you'll probably taste." <laughs> thank you, Commander. I uh, thank you. So, and, Commander, is there anything? Uh, well, first of all, Mr. Zions, your drink, please. Uh, I'm I'm fine, Captain. Please continue. Uh, what can we do for you, uh, Commander? And first, thank you, thank you for uh, seeing to Akagi. It's we've been out for a while on our own. Well, uh, we'll do what we can to uh, restock and refit you, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we do have some unpleasant business uh, that concerns you and I guess the rest of your senior staff, Captain. Uh, I'll just get straight to it. Uh, our head JAG officer, Commander Vo, uh, is accused of murdering our Klingon ambassador, or former Klingon ambassador, Ambassador Halash. And Ambassador Halash, and I will put that in chat. Um, the ambassador was found dead in the uh, JAG officer's office. Uh, with multiple stab wounds from his own diktag. And if that wasn't bad enough, uh, Commander Vo's DNA was discovered on the dagger. Needless to say, uh, there's a lot of questions that we don't have answers to at the moment, but where this is all going is that we need someone to sit as judge slash jury for the presiding uh, trial that is coming up literally tomorrow and i was hoping that you and your senior staff captain would be able to do that for us before we get to that commander what sort of fallout should we expect from ambassador halash being murdered in a starfleet output that is uh, a tricky subject uh the klingons have sent their own uh, representative uh, he should be arriving actually within the hour. I honestly don't know really what's going on with the Klingons, but they've already made overtures that uh, the commander in question, Commander Vo, uh, if they are not cleared and the Klingons are already making it out like she won't, uh, she's probably going to be sent to Ruripente or something worse. As for... Um relationships with the Klingons it's hard to tell with them I'm I'm sure you're more familiar with them than I am what yeah. um does this uh ambassador Hulash have any relations to uh Chancellor Vavag I'm not sure to be honest uh I've tried to remain somewhat impartial uh, in case I'm asked to represent anyone. But I can certainly get you that information during the trial. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be um, for the trial. And Zines will kind of look to Captain Miller. Uh, we had a actually a positive run-in with Chancellor Vavag that if tensions get very high, maybe he's somebody we could talk to about calming things down. That would be a uh, very welcome, I don't want to call it a maneuver, but it, it would be a uh, good course of action should things get heated. Well, Commander, my staff and I are certainly here and ready to help in whatever capacity we can, especially if you need us to take over the investigation. Um, if you don't mind me asking, and forgive me if this oversteps my position, but since the murder, has the station been on lockdown? Have there been any ships coming and going that we should be aware of? Uh, specifically, if, if there's a murderer on the loose, that I'm, I'm just going to assume that's not Commander Vo. It, they could have gotten off the station. The only ship that came in and out uh, was a standard uh, Denobulan freighter uh, about two days after the murder took place. 
We made sure that uh, no sort of stowaways or uh, would-be unknown passengers made it onto the freighter. Of course, you know, there is always a room of uh, room of error. Uh, there is a possible escape, but, I mean, I, I hate to put it this way, but I am sort of running a station here. I can only keep it on lockdown for so long. Hmm. But a station this size with the number of people on it, it's going to almost be impossible to conduct a murder investigation when we can't even be certain who's going to be on, on the station at any given point. True, but the good news on that is besides the Akagi and this freighter, there has been no other docking activity that I'm aware of. Very good, Commander. I guess the first place, well, I guess I should ask, what would be our role in these proceedings? Well, your role, uh, unless you were asked specifically by Commander Vo to represent her, uh, your role will be jury and judge. You will be calling, uh, not calling witnesses, you will be basically taking in the information, uh, making judgments, asking questions of the uh, those that are on the stand, and in general, uh, you will be basically the sort of third impartial party to all of this. Now, if any of you have any relationship with Commander Vo, be it professional or otherwise, now would be the time to say something. Designs. I I have not, no. And I take it, are we going to be part of the investigation? That I leave up to your discretion. Uh, I have here a data pad that goes over most of what we know so far and what's expected to be brought up at the trial. And she hands you a data pad. You probably want to discuss that with your senior staff and decide how you want to proceed. Thank you, Commander. There's a bit of protocol we have to establish first. If we are expected to render a verdict on the innocence or guilt of Commander Vo, we have to establish a, uh, a separation of bias, if you will. Can't investigate someone's murder and then be the, the judgment on said murder as well. Read my mind. So are you suggesting that I don't know, one of your senior staff recuse themselves? Well, as the senior officer on the station, kind of look to her to correct me. I believe proper procedure is I step out of the the investigation so as to not uh, drive my bias towards guilt or innocence. Does that sound, uh, does that sound fair? Sounds more than fair. In fact, I, I would... Think nothing less of you, Captain. Uh, it is what is expected of you, as weird as that is to say. Number one, I, I know this may not be something you're prepared for, but I'd like you to lead the investigation. And in the meantime, I will see if I can figure out what to do about the Klingon. Uh, of course, Captain. Uh, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. Um, I'll just need access and clearances to be able to go, well, wherever I want on the station anyways. Um, and I'll probably take, uh, unless you would like her as part of the tribunal, I'll take, um, Commander Zarya with me. Um, her ability to read people will probably be pretty useful. I think that would be perfect. Um... If there's nothing else, I can get started. If you want to give me all or uh, send me towards your security officer's office so I can start relaying with them. Of course. And uh, she hands you a pad as well and says, uh, the trial starts uh, at 0800 tomorrow. So not a whole lot of time, but uh, hopefully it is enough. Hopefully. All right. So, now, Commander Zinros, in the meantime, if you wouldn't mind passing me any intelligence you might also have about Klingon ship movements in the area, I, uh, well, let me, let me rephrase that. Uh, I, let's not assume the Klingons are 
are taking any hostile actions here or they would use this as an opportunity, but it would be good to know what ships are in, their, are in the area just in case. Makes sense. Uh, I will compile a report for you and have it on your desk uh, within the hour. Thank you very much, Commander. I think we all have a lot to do. Indeed. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And yeah. So in interest of keeping everyone involved, what we're going to do here is we're going to do another little time skip where Zines, you've had time to go and talk with the security personnel. And Miller, you've gotten the report. That way I can give you guys all the information at once rather than split up. And we'll say that you meet with the senior staff on the Akagi in the briefing room. And uh, basically the way it'll go, and so everyone gets this information. Um, the way it, it, the events gone down are as follows. So at approximately 2100, uh, Commander Vo leaves her office and seals it behind her. And the only way in or out of that room is either Vo's security code or a station security code. And what happens is the next day at approximately uh, 0700, uh, Vo walks into her office and finds the ambassador, Ambassador Halash, dead on the floor in a pool of blood. Now, an autopsy was run, and it, again, was confirmed that the ambassador died from multiple stab wounds leading to hemorrhaging, leading to death by blood loss. And the time of death is somewhere around 2130, so about 30 minutes after Vo left her office. And there are no logs that indicate uh, any entrance to that office during the period after which Vo left originally. And the other point of information that you get is that the dagger that was discovered to be the murder weapon, uh, Vo's DNA, her skin cells, were found on the handle of the dagger as well as on the blade. And there was a small incident uh, reported involving a uh, medical personnel uh, around 0200. But the only reason that's in the report is because uh, about 0200, the power in the um, the main sick bay was disrupted. And for a moment, the sort of life sign, how do I want to say this? The, let me back up because I think I've, I've forgotten to say something. So the power loss in sick bay happened after the murder and after the body was discovered. So the following day, after the body was being autopsied, stored in the morgue, etc. I think that was what I left out. The power goes out in sick bay for approximately 15 minutes. And when the power comes back, the dagger, the murder weapon, is back on the ambassador's person. And there is no like logical way or at least basically every, you know everyone who's tried to figure it out they they have no idea how the dagger got from the security office back onto the ambassador during that time and i think that's everything and if you want to ask questions i can give you some information but that's what everybody gets at this point and uh TOS, so no knowledge of chronotons or anything like that, correct? I think chronotons are still around, uh, but it wouldn't be a standard thing to check for. Okay, and it wouldn't be a standard thing that somebody would think to check for. Yeah, I leave that up to your discretion. Are there any other ships that are still here that were there at the time of the incident? Uh, no. Again, the only ship that okay. came and left was the Denobulan Freighter. And that was a very small ship, a uh, crew of about five, and it was literally just a cargo tug. Um, so you have logs that show that they were very thorough about checking the cargo and making sure no one slipped aboard. Um, but that is sort of a loose end. Is and there as any... far as Miller's... Sorry, you go. As far as Miller's position at this point following procedure, would he not 
like would this information not be available to him until the trial so that he doesn't form an opinion that sort of thing uh i'm going to say that you're privy to the information because this is what has been presented so far but you don't get specific like testimony kind of a thing okay so it's kind of like the the Riker trial if you remember that episode of TNG where we already know that the station blows up but we don't know why it's blowing up it's kind of that sort of trial do we know um the uh ambassador's location before the time of the murder specifically before 2100 Yes, the ambassador was spotted uh, on the station's promenade uh, eating what appeared to be gach. Okay. Um, is there any <clears throat> is there any reports or anything of in logs of com- Commander Bo and Ambassador Hulash having any sort of interactions before? I would say that aside from an occasional visit uh, to discuss JAG uh, inf- JAG affairs, uh, no, they had no relationship, professional or personal, as far as anyone is aware. Um, I will. Ha- I would like to have the computer run. Go back as far as, I don't know, maybe a month, and see if there's any footage of mm-hmm. them uh, even bumping into each other, um, you know, somebody tripping and helping the other one up, or anything like that. Um, I'm Reason being is I'm trying to think of any reason why her skin cells would be on his weapon other than somebody placing them there. All right. I would say the computer will run that, but it would be something that would arrive during the trial. So I will feed you that information then. Okay. Did anyone spot um, the ambassador leaving the promenade? Uh, No, there are no reports of him uh, leaving the promenade. Uh, He simply was eating gah one moment, and then 30 minutes later, he's dead in an office. That's some pretty powerful gawk. <laughs> um, are we just it's, are we just spitballing ideas here? Yeah, basically, this is you sort of pseudo in character, out of character, discussing what's on the table, um, and we're doing it this way because I think it's easier than you know hashing it out via the trial because the trial is going to have specific testimony. That will then shape your opinion of this evidence so far. Okay. My my idea to bring to the commander uh, is that we have to rule out any sort of issue. Like, you could easily use the transporter to probably put DNA onto that weapon. And a transporter would be an easy way to get a body behind that door. So we have to check all the transporters on the station... And if we can get the transport logs from that nobly freighter, if it had a transporter. Did indeed. I think that's Miller. that we have to rule it out first. Miller stands up and he straightens his shirt. You know, a murder like this, especially against a Klingon ambassador, a murder on its own is one of the most extreme things that a person can do to another individual. And particularly to a Klingon ambassador, uh, a scuffle where a person can overcome them and kill them with a bladed weapon. It's not something someone does lightly. My father used to say back on Camus 3R Colony, murders don't happen without a motive. So I think the key to this murder is what was the motive that led to this ambassador's death? And I think that will point as a straight line to who did it. Where was the um, Diktog found in the Ambassador? Uh, The dagger was found on the floor next to the Ambassador in the pool of blood. 
And where were the wounds? The wounds were primarily concentrated around the chest area, um, specifically near both hearts. Hmm. Sounds were there any defensive wounds? Uh, no, that is the strange thing, is that there were zero uh, defensive wounds. Interesting. And then, do we know anything about Vo's, uh, where Vo was in those hours between 2100 and 0700? According to station logs, uh, her comm badge was in her quarters. Okay. It just occurred so to it- me, Commander Zarya, I'd like to give you full authority over the medical facilities on this station as far as this investigation goes, uh, it just occurred to me that you as a medical expert would present a possible unbiased third party when it comes to examining the body. I'd be happy to help in that way. Um, I do have one question, though. I may have missed it in all of the information. Was there a toxicology report? There was, and really that's something a little bit odd is that there were no poisons. Uh, They did confirm that uh, there were no toxins or even liquor in the ambassador system, but strangely, there was no ga in his stomach. Were there Hmm. any signs of, like, recent vomiting? Nope. And that's the strange thing. Okay, noted. (laughs) Okay, I, with the commander's approval, I would like to uh, set up some teams to analyze to go to each transporter pad on the station and start do, analyzing them for both uh, the records and to see if there's any sort of DNA that that uh, relates back to the ambassador. Alrighty, so that's going to be an extended task. Um, we'll handle that in a moment, but before we do that. Uh, One thing I forgot to have the uh, commander tell you is that uh, for the uh, proceedings, uh, you can have one to three individuals on the panel. Uh, That way, it, it or I should say one or three people because it has to be an odd number. That way, you know, in case there's like someone who um, disagrees, like th- there's a majority basically. And this is the panel that decides the verdict? Yes. And the panel can be anyone who's here. Um, You just have to tell me who you, like, which one of you wants to be on the panel and who would prefer to stay on the investigation side of things. I would, I think, after giving, is it okay if I've given my, my little thing here and then joining the panel? Yeah, that's fine. Like, my Riley's parents have a background in, in Federation politics, and they've been involved in many situations, not like this, but situations that have had high stakes attached. And he would, he feels comfortable that he could take himself out and be a unbiased third party. I think that's fair. And I think Miller, as the highest ranking officer, should probably. I'm happy to put Zarya on the panel as well. We'll we'll see how that goes, but I'll put her there. Noted. All right. So I believe that leaves Zines. You're going to stay in charge of the investigation. Sounds like it. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's handle this extended task because it is an important bit of information. Uh, oh wait, does that mean I can't? I don't get to work on this myself. No, this does mean that you have to use a supporting Shit. character for these roles. All right. Um, I think for accusing myself in the investigation, I would definitely recommend designs uh, both Lieutenant Mendoza. Um, not that he's good at anything, but everyone seems to like him. And uh, Chief Weakass, because he is probably the ship's expert at uh, transporters. Fair. All right, so uh, the way uh, we'll run this then, because uh, we'll do this extended task, then move into the trial, 
And apologies if this is a little bit weird, but this is like my first time trying to run a trial, so I'm still feeling things out. Um, so whichever supporting character you would like to do the extended task, this is going to be a control and an engineering. And we'll say that the Akagi will assist you because I don't have station stats because I didn't think we'd need them. Um, we will have the Akagi assist you with a computers and engineering. The base difficulty is only a two, so it's very easy. Well, supposedly, anyway. I can roll for uh, for Chief Weak Ass. Um, he does have a focus in transporters and replicators. Uh, would that apply? That would definitely apply. Do we have any momentum? Uh, no, unfortunately, you have no momentum at the moment. Okay. Ha. <laughs> Very nice. You start off with one momentum. And if you could roll me six challenge dice, please. Well, uh, do you want do you want somebody to get the ship? Yeah, if someone if someone can get the ship real fast All right, for extra momentum. Uh, computers engineering. Yep. All right, so just the one momentum. And uh, I will say if you spend that momentum to do one more work, you actually complete the extended task uh, straight out because it's a very easy extended task. I think that's a great idea. Okay. So, yes, what you do find is that there is transporter activity around 2130 of the day of the murder or the night of the murder. However... The logs do not indicate that a transport was made from the ambassador's office or to the, or not the ambassador's office, the JAG officer's office. Um, instead, the transport occurred uh, from a cargo bay to a cargo bay as far as the logs are concerned. And with that, we're going to skip ahead a little bit to the trial. All right, so Zines, uh, you can still be present, Zines. Um, you just, like, can't be on the panel kind of a thing. All right, and okay. Miller, you're in the middle because you're the highest ranking. All right, so uh, the courtroom is very similar. If you uh, remember the trial of uh, Captain Kirk and... Really, any trial in the TOS era, it's basically a large open room with two desks uh, for both the defendant and the prosecutor. There's a chair in the middle of the room that faces a raised platform where the panel sits. And there's a stenographer, uh, as well as several uh, other witnesses and people who will be called into question. Uh, and there's also a screen on the wall to present any video evidence. Uh, you notice uh, as you all walk into the uh, the trial room that uh, Commander Vo, uh, the JAG officer on trial, is actually being represented by uh, Commander Zin Ross, and that the Klingon that has arrived uh, looks to be one without ridges. So looks like he is uh, suffering from the augment virus. Though I don't think you know that in character per se. You just know that he doesn't have ridges. Um, but yeah, uh, at this point, Miller, uh, you as sort of the ranking officer can convene the trial and really it's your discretion how the trial proceeds from here. All right. Well, ding on the bell. This trial is now in session. The matter at hand is the murder of Ambassador Hawash. I believe representing Commander Vo, one of the chief suspects in this murder, is Commander Zinros. And the Klingon delegate, I believe, presenting a counter argument is leave an opening for him to present himself. Yes, he uh, stands and adjusts his tunic and says, My name is Hummock Claude. I am to take the, the commander to Rua Penthe after they are found guilty. Thank you, Mr. Claude. I trust that you have been told by the uh, the Klingon High Council that the judgment of this court will be binding a judgment of guilty or not guilty 
we would expect you and the Klingon uh, Empire to respect whatever the outcome that we we rule. Of course. However, with the evidence that will be presented, I think that our case will be very solid and self-evident. And sorry, out of character. So what would Zines' role be in this situation if Zinros is representing Vo? So Zines is basically going to be doing um, any sort of checks. Well, so you're all going to be doing checks if you want like insight checks to see what witnesses are saying, things like that. Uh, Zines is a little bit special in that Zines can not only do the insight checks, but he can talk to people sort of on the sly, like via data pad, to confirm or otherwise verify information. Whereas you on the panel, you just have to sit there and listen and insight and ask questions kind of a thing. Hopefully I'm not losing cool. anybody on this, though. Nope. Can I I'll ask a question? You may certainly ask a question. Um, how did uh, Clad get here? Uh, Clad arrived on the Klingon scout uh, Hustamak. Uh, they arrived uh, approximately 12 hours ago. Okay, we know that where that ship is? Uh, yes, it is currently off uh, in station keeping around the station. Okay, perfect. And Miller will say, uh, this time I open the floor to Commander, actually to uh, Mr. Claude to make an opening statement. Very well. Uh, he stands, uh, he moves over to the screen. And uh, he taps on it, and immediately what is displayed is a rather grisly image of uh, the dead ambassador, probably moments after he was discovered, and says, As you can see here, the ambassador died in an extremely humiliating way. There was no chance of fighting back, and we as Klingons find that extremely dishonorable. However, what my argument is, is that this was a crime of passion. And uh, he taps on the panel, and there is a blurry hollow image. Uh, it looks to be two figures. Uh, one more or less looks like a blurry version of the ambassador. And then there's an image of uh, what could be Commander Vo from the back, or at least it's a woman, a Vulcan woman with uh, short hair. Uh, but you, you don't see their face. Uh, and he says, as you can see here, the ambassador and the commander were intimate. And it was very obvious after looking at the autopsy that this was a spat, I believe is how you humans say it. It was an argument that got out of hand and Commander Vo executed her lover. Are we allowed to ask questions? You're on the panel, so yes, you are. <clears throat> um, Mr. Clad, um, do you have any other evidence of this relationship? We do indeed. In fact, if the panel would allow it, I would like to call my first witness. Of course, Mr. Clad. And if no one else does. Yeah. Okay. Very well. Uh, would Lieutenant Commander Morgan please uh, come to the stand? And uh, the gentleman in the back uh, with slicked black, uh, short hair, uh, sort of a goatee, uh, wearing a Starfleet uniform. Uh, his insignia is Lieutenant Commander. And he is wearing uh, Operations Gold. So he uh, comes to the uh, chair, sits down, says, My name is Lieutenant Commander Morgan, serial number AJ7113. And I verify that all information that I present from here on out is what I believe to be the truth and nothing but the truth. Do we have any information presented to us on uh, Morgan's record? Uh, if you would request it, I can give you that information. Um, so why don't we have Zines? Uh, let's have Zines, because I do want to keep Zines involved here. Uh, Zines, I'd like you to roll me a... Uh, let's do a control and a command. And the difficulty here is just a one. Okay.
yeah, no applicables. All right, you get a momentum. So, uh, Zines, you are able to confirm that Lieutenant Commander Morgan has served aboard Starbase 23 for the past five years and that his service record is otherwise spotless. He is a model officer. Okay. Um, I guess I'll uh, send that over to the judge's pad and so that way he can see it. Okay. Would I be able to get any specialized information on his psychological profile? Yes. Uh, so let's have you roll a control and a medicine. The difficulty here will be only a one. Applicable focus psychiatry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm on a roll tonight. Yeah, you know, at least it's not a complication. So unfortunately, um, no psychological data is available. Uh, almost as if whoever was supposed to do a psych eval on him uh, didn't. Uh, the last one you have for him is like all the way back at Academy days. Yeah, people get complacent on these star bases. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, once Lieutenant Commander Morgan has sat down, identified himself, sworn in, etc., etc., uh, Clad begins pacing back and forth, and he says, Mr. Morgan, uh, where were you the night of the murder? And Morgan kind of stoically stares ahead and says, Sir, I was in engineering, overseeing the installation of a new conduit. Very good. And what was your relationship with the defendant? Uh, don't think I had one, sir. I knew she was on the station, and... Other than that, didn't really have any run-ins with her. Very well, then you would say that you have no vested interest in lying to her effect. And at this point, uh, Commander Zinross says, Objection! Leading the witness. Uh, sustained. And Mr. Clyde, it's... It goes without saying, perhaps, that... Mr. Morgan is a Starfleet officer who is also speaking under oath the words that I expect to come out of his mouth will all be truthful. Of course, my apologies. And actually, this just occurred to me. Uh, Zines, if you want to run Commander Zinross and be the defendant, I think that might work a little bit better. Um, that way you're more involved. Because I feel I feel a little bit bad, but I do want to keep uh, you involved. I was just going to message you a question that I was going to try to query from the computer as Zines. <laughs> yeah, well, you can run both. So what, what are you querying? Okay. Um... This new conduit that he was working on, mm -hmm. uh, does it does it or anything that's inside of that conduit power sickbay? Interesting. Roll me a insight and in engineering difficulty two. Oh, god damn it. Just going to throw this out there. These are not money stats. <laughs> um, engineering stat. Damn straight. I'm a, I'm a fighter and a pilot. Um... We have the momentum. Uh, you do have the momentum. Yeah, I was thinking about the momentum or a determination. Um, oh, it seems early for that. All right, I'll just do the momentum. I'll spend okay. a momentum for a third dice. And no applicable focuses. Oh, well. No. Uh, yeah, Starship Tactical Systems, Starship Helm Operations, probably not. Nah, unfortunately not. All right. I couldn't remember if I had Starship Power Systems. Um, well, sweet. Wow. Jeebus. That's, that's a really good roll. You get two momentum from that. Uh, with that many success designs, you're going to find something very important. And yes, this conduit is something that would power sickbay. Okay. Um, then we got two momentum. Can I spend a momentum to ask a question? You certainly may. Um, when they replaced the conduit, mm -hmm. um, what was the reason and was it, what was the reason for it being replaced? The reason I asked this question is, uh, maybe I'm wording it badly. Um, let me reword that question. Okay. Was the conduit, conduit replaced for, because it was damaged or was it replaced because of like standard maintenance? It was, I asked this question okay. because the way Morgan described it was it was an emergency. 
Yes, and in fact, what you see is that the conduit was not scheduled for maintenance for another month, and that supposedly it was faulty as far as the logs are concerned. Okay. All right. Then, yeah, I'm I'm done with Zion's question. Okay. And yeah, if, if you want to interject as Zinros, please feel free. Um, but Claude continues, and he says, Very well. Uh, again, my apologies for leading the witness, and he does air quotes. What I mean to establish is that Morgan, Mr. Morgan here, has seen Commander Vo before and has no reason to mislead. Mr. Morgan, can you describe what you saw approximately one week ago at Stardate? And he gives the Stardate. And uh, Morgan straightens up a little bit and says... Uh, yes, I was coming back from my shift when I spotted the ambassador and the commander having a verbal altercation in one of the hallways. And Clad pauses for dramatic effect and says, Were you able to tell what they were fighting about? Uh, no, sir. I try to avoid confrontation like that, but uh, I did hear some very colorful Klingon insults. Um, then, oh, go ahead. Lieutenant Commander, you uh, speak Klingon? I only know what phrases I have picked up with uh, friends at drinking contests, sir. Fair enough. Uh, Commander Zinros, objection. Then, if that's how he knows Klingon, hearsay. I'm going to sustain that, I, Mr. Morgan, unless you have any follow-up that would explain your familiarity with Klingon enough to make a statement that stands behind your oath as a Starfleet officer. I'd like to, to strike that. Of course, sir. My apologies. Uh, however, there there was English spoken, sir, or at least Earth common. Uh, as far as I was able to tell, they were arguing about some sort of ritual. I, I don't know what ritual they were talking about, but I do recall that the word ritual was involved. And Claude uh, sort of walks back and forth again and says, Very good. That's all the questions I have for you, Mr. Morgan. Your witness, Commander. And he sits back down and gives the floor to Zinros. Commander Morgan, um, who, uh, who approved uh, working on this conduit? Uh, you did, ma'am. <laughs> well, see, here's the bad part. Did she? Yes. Who brought the quote-unquote faultiness of it to her attention? Uh, that would have been the chief engineer of the station, uh, who's actually sitting over here. That would be Mr. Evergreen over here. Okay. Um, very well. Um Have you seen, in any other way, uh, Commander Vo and the Ambassador together? Can you rephrase that for my sake, just so I'm saying the right thing? Um, have you seen them uh, having a meal? Have you seen them um, around the station, walking together, holding hands? Gotcha. Uh, so Morgan responds, uh, no, ma'am. Uh, this was the first time I had ever seen them together. And in fact, it was the first time I had seen Commander Vo in probably months. Um, does Venros know that whether or not Morgan had any problems with either one of them? Uh, yes, she would know, and again, his record is spotless, so if there was anything going on, wasn't something she knew about. Okay. Um. Uh, no further questions, Your Honors, but I may want to re-question this, this witness. Very well, Commander. Um, and then she'll go back and take her place. Okay. Mr. Clad, I believe. Uh, do you have another witness? I do indeed. In fact, uh, it is a follow-up. Uh, Mr. Evergreen, if you could please take the stand. 
And uh, Morgan and Evergreen sort of swap places. Uh, Evergreen, uh, as his token suggests, is actually in civvy clothes at the moment, which is a little bit odd, but there's a reason for it. Uh, but he has a uh, sort of medium length uh, auburn hair. Uh, he has a fuller beard than Morgan does. Uh, he has a very bright smile, very white smile that he seems to have, even though that he's being a witness at a trial. Um, but he sits down, he identifies himself. He says, my name is uh, Lieutenant Commander Evergreen. I am currently here or ever. Oh, wow. I dropped the R. Good job, me. Evergreen. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Commander Evergreen. I am here of my own volition, off duty, uh, to present uh, what I can in Commander Vo's defense. Um, can I have Zion uh, check his record? You may indeed. That's going to be another control and command for me. Difficulty one. All right, you get another momentum. So what you learn is that Evergreen has a very colorful history. Uh, he is almost on monthly or bi-weekly report for some form of, I wouldn't call it dereliction of duty, but it's definitely not something a Starfleet officer should be. So let me put it another way. He gets into a lot of drinking contests, which then lead to altercations, which then leads to substandard performance on the job. Basically, his record indicates that the only reason he's the chief engineer of the station is because no one else would take him. And thankfully, the station doesn't need that much in the way of maintenance. Um, I'm going to send, uh, I'll send that, obviously I'll send that to the judge's, um, pad and then I'll send a message to Riley mm -hmm. of, uh, I, that like basically asking him to mentally double check anything he says as far as like, um, work that may or may not be needed or things like that. Basically Zines is telling Riley to be the engineering, um, uh, lie detector. Mm -hmm. um, no way, Jose. I, tr I trust this guy. I like this guy. <laughs> because he's a drunken engineer? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if Starfleet it's has for a, a reason. Yeah, Starfleet has a stellar reputation of engineers that drink. Just, just a wee nip. Can I see if I can get any additional information on him? You certainly may. That's going to be a control medicine difficulty of two. I was going to use one of these momentum because I've been doing <laughs> real bad tonight. <laughs> Applicable focus, yes. Yep. Hey, you get the momentum <laughs> right back. Very okay, nice. Okay, I won't even take it out. <laughs> so, uh, Zarya, it's a good thing you asked because uh, his psych profile comes up uh, actually almost right away. Uh, what you're seeing is that Evergreen has sort of a inferiority complex. Uh, there's a lot of self-doubt in his uh, psych profile. There's a lot of, uh, shall we say, um, reckless actions that are probably a result of him trying to prove himself. But what you're, what you're not seeing is any violent tendencies, uh, any sort of, shall we say, reckless abandon or, you know, thoughts of hurting others. Um I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm looking at my notes. I think that's I think that's pretty much all you look at. Yeah, like no, there's a little bit of self-destructive because he does drink a lot, but it's quote unquote manageable. Okay, we have our functional alcoholic here. Mm -hmm. I will take that uh, under note. I was going to say lean forward. A bit of lean forward, Mister Evergreen. You attended Starfleet Academy, is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. So when you were at Starfleet Academy, did they mention about procedure, when to be in uniform? Uh, yes, sir. And I will apologize for my appearance. Uh, unfortunately, in preparing a, another incident on the station hours before this, I may or may not have burned about half of my uniform. Well, it's good to know that you were injured. If you could send that information about the uh, engineering problem over to Mr. Riley, it would certainly be useful information, or especially to uh, Commander Zinros here. 
if there's a dangerous situation on the station, we'd all like to know about it. Oh. Is everyone else in dress uniform? Yes, everyone else is like in dress uniform. So and... I instantly ask, were you repairing a plasma conduit in your dress uniform? Uh, honestly, sir, uh, yes. Uh, I didn't have time to change to or from my normal one, and I honestly thought it would just be a quick fix before I came here. And Riley has to turn around in his chair to stop everyone from seeing him laughing. So, uh, Riley, I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering, please. And the difficulty here is a two. Um, would any of my focuses apply? Uh, I believe you have EPS as a focus, yes? I do not. I think I tr was going to take that. Uh, do you have anything I did related not. to maintenance and or power systems? Uh, warp core mechanics and flight control systems. Nothing specifically power systems. Uh, in that case, no focus. And you do have two momentum, but you don't need it. So, Riley, you know, you're not the best expert uh, when it comes to EPS, but you're pretty sure that some form of energy discharge that quote unquote burns a uniform, he would be severely injured from that. Uh, he like, he should not be here on the stand. If what he says has happened has happened. Uh, Mr. Evergreen. Um, how did you avoid injury? If your uniform was destroyed so thoroughly, Honestly, I believe it was because I had grounded myself. Uh, you, I obviously don't know your profession, sir, but uh, a good ground has saved many lives. Even Zines is going to tilt his head because yeah. as a pilot, <laughs> like, I, I, I know a little bit, and Zines just kind of, like, dog-style tilts his head to the side. Antennas go in opposite directions like he's confused. Mr. Evergreen, that's an interesting tale. I'd like to remind you that not only are you standing in a court under oath, you're also talking to a panel full of superior officers. Is this the story that you'd like to give us? Uh, well, sir, no offense. I would rather not tell that story. It's very embarrassing. Um, there is a Green, life on the line here. That was a question. I don't believe I was questioning if you rather would like to tell the story or not. And Evergreen just sort of sits there, not really sure what to say. And Clad is looking between Evergreen and the panel like, this This was my witness. But yeah, uh, Clad does cough and says, <clears throat> um, if it pleases the court, I would like to proceed with questions. Out of character, I'm almost like just kick this guy out. If if his if he can't even give us a straight answer on how he got out of uniform, like what are we even gonna let him answer questions for? I mean that's that's a fair call, and that's something you guys can decide as a panel. I'd like to hear it. Um, Maybe I'll... he has something. No, Miller doesn't say it out loud, so I wouldn't know to message him. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'd still like to hear his, his testimony just in case he gives us something to, to to like look at. And who knows, maybe he maybe it was really an, an, just a super embarrassing thing and he's I don't know. My apologies, Mr. Collad. It's uh the uniform we wear carries a certain amount of pride and, and honor as well. I apologize for getting so worked up. Please continue with your question. Of course. And I will apologize on the witness's behalf, but let's not dive too far into that. Uh, Mr. Evergreen, can you tell us where you were about the time of the murder? And uh, Evergreen shifts a little bit uncomfortably and says, I was uh, in seven forward, sir. And what is it you were doing there? I, I was... I was drinking. And um, tell me, what did you see? 
Uh, what? Well, sirs, uh, as I was stumbling home uh, around uh, about 2115, I saw the ambassador uh, finishing up a plate of gah. I see. And was he with anyone? Uh, not that I recall, no. Very good. And do you have any relationship with Commander Vo? And uh, Evergreen does look at Vo, and I would like Zarya. I'd like you to roll me an insight medicine, please. Um, can I ask one quick question mm -hmm. while she's rolling? He's talking about the day of the murder, or yes. he's talking about the day that they were together. Uh, the day of the murder. Okay, so. Okay, cool. Applicable focus: social networks. Sure. All right, you get a momentum, and uh, yeah, what you're uh, what you're getting off of him, Zarya, is that he is he's very anxious about this line of questioning, and in that moment he looks at Vo. There's something more there that he's not saying, but you can't quite put your finger on what it might be. I have a question. Oh, the witness. sure, you can go first. And this is purely speculation, but I believe as a judge, I'm allowed to speculate. Uh, Commander, have you had anything to drink today? Uh, honestly, sir, uh, yes, I, I have had a little bit to drink. Uh, I, I'm very nervous without it, sir. You look very nervous with it as well. He just remains quiet at that one. And I look to Zarya and shrug. Commander Evergreen, what's your relationships with the... Uh, oh my gosh. The defendant and the victim. Have you had any interactions with them? Uh, no, no ma'am. I don't have any sort of relationship with them. And I would like everyone to roll me a insight and con or an insight in medicine if you're a certain psychiatrist uh, or psychologist. So let me rephrase that. Zarya, you're rolling insight medicine with a focus. I am a psychiatrist, though. Yeah. So you're rolling insight medicine with a focus. <laughs> that's a complication. Uh, Miller, Riley, and Zines. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're rolling in Psycon. So let's see what we got. Would a focus in empathy Empathy would definitely apply here. Zarya gets dust in her eye as she's looking. <laughs> what was the successes needed? Just two. So you've actually okay. all succeeded except for the captain. All right. So uh -huh. I'm probably reading too far into it, actually. I'm going to let you decide how you flavor the complication, but here's what sure. the success gets you. Um, Evergreen is definitely lying. There is something between him and Vo, but again, it's not clear what that something is. And Miller, you're just oblivious to this. I think Miller's just peeved about the situation. He's got like a drunk officer out of uniform. He's just not happy. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. I'm immediately jumping to <laughs> conclusions I should not jump to. So that's where Zarya stands right now. Um, Lieutenant Commander Evergreen, um, for the second time, I'd like to remind you that you are under oath here. Um, there will be no judgment on your character if you have had any relationship. We need the facts. There are lives at stake here. Of course, sir. Uh, I, I've been pretty honest so far. Well, not pretty, pretty honest, but I, I, I have been honest so far. And if so I may remind you, there are further effects in the relationships between our peoples at stake here. I am aware of that, ma'am. Yes.
you do also know, Lieutenant Commander Evergreen, that if we have if we find that you've been lying about any information here, you will be held in contempt of court and face substantial time in uh well very heavy penalty lying to a Starfleet in a Starfleet court of law carries substantial penalty. He shifts a little bit nervously, you know, going back and forth in his chair, almost squirming. He says, I, I, I am aware of that, sirs. Yes. And there is no penalty in you admitting something that is embarrassing or shocking in this courtroom today, as long as it's the truth. Then, um, then I will just say then that, yes, uh, I, I once had a relationship with the commander. It wasn't a very long one, but we did have one. And how recently was this relationship? Uh, years ago, uh, was when I first came to the station. All right, thank you, Commander. I, I hope you continue to be forthcoming and truthful. Of course, sirs. Um, and he looks at Clad, and Clad is like a little bit stymied, like this is not going the way he expected. And he says, uh, right, um, I just have one further question before I turn the witness over. Uh, Mr. Evergreen, in your professional opinion, uh, the power conduit, would you say that it was replaced for a good reason? And Evergreen looks a little bit confused that the power conduit is what he's being asked about. And he says, um, yeah, there was nothing. Well, obviously there was problems with the conduit, but. You know, I, I guess I'm not really understanding the question. And Clad sort of paces back and forth and says, let, let me rephrase. In your professional judgment, why is it that the uh, conduit needed to be replaced uh, so quickly? And uh, Evergreen sort of scratches the back of his head and says, uh, power's sick bay, and without it, uh, shouldn't... It, like, sick bay needs power. I, I don't think there's... A, any other way to say that? And Clad sort of says, hmm, I see. So you mean to say that the relationship between the power loss of the uh, sick bay is something that was expected? And Evergreen says, uh, yes, sir. Then there is only the mystery of who turned off the lights to lead the dagger, as it were. And Evergreen says, I suppose so. And Clad says, Clad just smiles and says, very well, that's all I had for this witness. And he sits down. Commander Zinros, do you have any questions? Yeah, I was muted. Um, yes. Um, when did the power coupling or the, the power conduit, when did its faultiness come to light? Uh, approximately an hour before it was replaced, sir. We tried to get it replaced as soon as possible. And it was replaced at what time? Oh, 0200? Yes, sir. Huh. And who brought this? Uh, who brought this to your attention? I believe it was Lieutenant Commander Morgan over there, sir. So you sent him to replace it? Yes, sir. Um, have you checked his work at all? No, or I trust seen, him, sir. Or seen what the conduit looked like before he replaced it? Uh, no, sir. Again, I trust him. Interesting. Um, and are you, or to your knowledge, is Commander Morgan proficient with using a transporter? Well, we all learn about transporters in the Academy, sir. Um, are Lieutenant, that's not, that's not what he asked. Uh, 
sorry, sir. Uh, yes, I, I believe we are both proficient in, in transporter technology. Are either, are either one of you or both of you proficient? Ooh. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Are either one of you or both of you proficient enough to make site-to-site -site transports as well as getting rid of transporter logs? And again, he looks uncomfortable and says, uh, yes, sir. It, any one on my staff, including myself and Morgan, could do that. And was any of those type of transports made that night? Uh, yes, sir. There was a... Uh, any thanks for a moment. Uh, there was a cargo transfer, as far as I'm aware. Cargo transfer on the station, site to site. Correct. And were there any made that... Were there any made that the records were expunged? No, sir. Are you uh, completely sure of this? Uh, yes, sir. Is there anyone else on the station that is proficient enough with this to do that sort of thing besides yourself or Commander Morgan? Um, honestly, I, I don't know the station compliments, sir. I, I suppose it is possible. Mr. Zinros, I have to ask you, is there a question that you have that's relevant to the murder of the ambassador here, you could phrase. I have to say Mr. Evergreen is himself not on trial. Then I will ask uh, just a couple more questions, Your Honor. But I'm going to ask as Zines. Okay. Has that footage that I asked for been brought up? Yes, it or has. Or has been finished? Yep, it has come to you. And uh, if I recall the footage correctly, um, what you're seeing is just we're on the same page. This is the footage of the transporters. Yes. No, this is the footage I asked for was of um, seeing Vo and Hulash together. Ah, that, um, that one. OK. And now because of things that have come up in the trial, as you said, it probably would. Mm -hmm. An image that Zion's going to look for is the day is I want to corroborate. Um, and I probably said that word wrong. And I'm right. completely sorry, Nick. Um, if one evergreen was present when the ambassador had the, had the GAC mm -hmm. and also two that Morgan saw them having that spat, and if there is footage of them having that spat. Okay. And again, that's why those I are asked, cause... Now, specifically because of stuff that has happened, those are two questions that I have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what you find, Zines, is something interesting. So, there is footage of the ambassador eating his plate of ga, but the footage of the argument... Besides the image you have been shown so far, there is no other image uh, currently available. Okay, then I'm going to very quickly pull up um, the date and time that Clad gave us for that very grainy, very cell phone-esque footage mm -hmm. um, that he showed us of who the ambassador was having that argument with. Okay. Uh, I would like you to roll me an insight security difficulty of three. Wonderful. I would like to blow my determination. Okay. Um, and I have the perfect value to use. Mm -hmm. uh, you said insight security, yes? Yep. Okay. The determination and the value I'm going to use is never stop learning. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to use it for... two automatic successes. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to use any um, uh, momentum because just in case my actual ro roll goes shitty, I would like to get rid of complications. Okay. Um, so we'll try this. Uh, applicable focus, probably not. 
Not unless security is considered tactical systems. No, unfortunately not. Okay. And survival, all that. Nope. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Get so... a momentum. Okay. And uh, what you're going to realize, Zines, is that probably what you were suspecting, this footage has been doctored. And the way it has been doctored is the image of the ambassador is obscuring who really is there. Wonderful. And is there a way I can tell who's really there? Unfortunately, without doing some further data processing, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to send that to uh, the judge's pads, and then I'm going to turn to Miller. Um, Captain, uh, may I share this information with uh, Commander Zenros? Yes, Mr. Zions, please do. And I will walk over and I will hand Commander Zenros the pad mm-hmm. and give her a moment to look at it. Once she acknowledges that she understands what it is, I'll walk back to where I'm standing as one of the security officers. Mm-hmm. And Zenros is going to ask, um, uh, who was it that saw the argument? It was Morgan, correct? It was Morgan, yes. Okay. Um, Commander Evergreen, um, I would like to know my last question for you. Have you had any arguments with Commander Bo in the last, and I'll look at the star date on there and just kind of overestimate a little bit, let's say a month? Mm-hmm. Um, have you had any arguments with Commander Bo? And for this, for reasons, I need everybody to roll me, well, at least the panel. Uh, I need the panel to roll me either Insight Medicine, in the case of Zarya, or Insight Con, for the rest of you. The difficulty on this is a 5. Probably because it's a very key question. (laughs) Okay. Um, By the way, uh, Zarya, if you would like to spend every momentum we have, you are completely okay with doing that (laughs) i was thinking of doing that because you're probably the only one that's got a shot at this can i use my focus in phasers (laughs) (laughs) it applies would i have a focus here uh zarya has a focus uh riley unfortunately phasers do not qualify Ah, close Close though, right? You almost gave it to me. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna let other people roll first. That way, when it goes badly. All right. Well, the good news is no complications so far. Would empathy be a focus? Empathy would definitely oh, be a focus. I I did not add the other. <laughs> I did not add the other dice. I'm just gonna do it again with two more dice. Uh. Holy crap, you're inside medicine. It's almost like this is her job. I know, right? Yes, there we go. Hey! Hey, Five successes. So, everybody but Zarya, when he says no, you would believe it implicitly. Zarya, you think he's lying. Uh, Zen oh, Ross wait, Insight Con, I did, I did not roll. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Again, the difficulty is five, so you can give me threat, momentum, determination, etc. Oh, shoot. Uh, speaking of determination, can I roll my veteran? Yeah, go ahead and roll your veteran, because that could be uh, very relevant here. And it's just, what, one challenge die? One challenge die, if it's an effect, you get it back. You get it back. Nice. You know, I think I, I, think I will use my determination... Okay. That's kind of the only way I could pull this off. I'll say my value is trust goes both ways. It does indeed. Oh, well, that's four. Close. Very close. Uh, I tell you what, I'll let it succeed at cost, but I would take threat for it. Do it. Yeah, sure. Okay, I will take that. And then, and then, 
spiders fall out of the ceiling. Yes, and then no. uh, Larry and Hook spiders fall out. Uh, no. Um, so I guess, so Miller and Zarya, you can tell that Evergreen just did a bold face lie. But Riley, Zyn, Zinross, everybody else believes that Evergreen just said yeah or said no, and it was the truth. I did want to ask a question. Um, would I be able to get the Akagi to start working on that footage, yeah, knowing that it might not it might not come back in time for the end of the trial, but just to get it started in case it does come up? Yeah, you uh, you can have your team on the Akagi start working on that. I would love to do that. Okay. I just look um, at Evergreen and I say, Mr. Evergreen, try again. Sorry, sir. Yeah, sorry, Captain. Uh, Zinrus will kind of like turn and look at, well, Zinrus and Zines will both kind of turn and look at Miller. With like a, and the, the antenna will kind of go out in a confused kind of emotion. Uh, See, Miller, who's okay. normally kind of calm and collected and carries a smile and a laugh. I think at this point it's completely evaporated for him. This is the this is the other side of Miller. He is he is not happy with Evergreen. I think he is staring daggers at Evergreen. I think at this point if he could he'd probably vault over and just slug this guy. Hmm. He's Mr. Evergreen, we both know that was a lie. So before I have the order to have you thrown in the brig, let's see if you can do better. And let's keep in mind that this panel is probably the worst combination of people for you to lie to, sir. And uh, he, if he wasn't fidgeting and sweating before, he's definitely now. And he says, uh, okay, um, I, I guess I'd like to amend my statement. My statement. Yes, I, I have had an argument with people in this room in the recent times. Uh, specifically Zen Ross will say and that person would be Commander he just points at Commander Vo hmm would you care to tell us the uh, why am I blanking on, on the word the nature con the nature thank you the nature of the argument so Evergreen opens his mouth closes it Opens it again, and suddenly he uh, he sits straighter up in his chair. He says, I refuse to answer that question on the basis that it could serve to incriminate me. Basically, he's invoking the fifth. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, with, the, with the judge's permission, I will just ask one more question, Commander. Um, and that question is this. Do you without incriminating yourself, do you know without a shadow of a doubt that Commander Vo did not kill the ambassador? And Clad actually says, Objection! There's This is pure speculation. The commander, Vin Ross, before the judges can step in, will lean, will lean to Clad and say, No, no it's not. It's personal knowledge which he can give us. It is not speculation. Your honors, he's not qualified to judge I... whether or not Commander Vo is a killer. As well, much as I hate speaking... to say it, I kind of agree with Clad. Evergreen has proven himself to be unreliable here. Then very well. If that's how one of the judges feel, then, um, and she will turn around and take the two other judges into review and say, then, um, the defense rests as we feel that the prosecutor has not, without a shadow of a doubt, proven that my client is guilty. And then she will walk back over to her desk. Okay. So, uh, it is at this point that, uh, unless anyone keeps Evergreen there, he very st almost stumbles off the stand and, and makes a very hasty exit. Then Ross will tap her calm. Mm -hmm. uh, security. Uh, please uh, find Commander Evergreen and um, sequester him to the brig. I will join you as soon as I can. Yes, ma'am. 
And it is at this point uh, that it would be the part of the trial where, like, you convene for lunch or you convene for a break. Um, so, you know, Miller, you know, you tap the bell and say, for the moment, we're adjourned, et cetera, et cetera. And you guys can talk freely amongst yourselves now. Is Clad still in the room? Uh, I would say that for sake of argument, uh, Clad and Commander Vo and uh, Zinros, they they all leave, uh, as well as the witnesses. Um, so, Zines, since you're leading up the, um, the thing on the Akagi, um, you can stay as liaison, but just remember that you're not on the panel kind of a thing. Um, well, I figured unless called upon by the panel... Zines will go with the other security officers and basically like lock the courtroom like he'll stand outside with the rest of them. Okay, fair enough. So it is uh, Mr. Miller, Ms. Zaria, and Mr. Riley. You have the moment to discuss and deliberate amongst yourselves. N knowing, um, is it, knowing Federation politics and law the way Riley does growing up with it his entire life, mm -hmm. is it, would it be normal for him to discuss this freely at the, in this moment before any judgment's been passed. Yes, and that is the privilege of you being on the panel is that you can freely discuss this with your other panelists. Okay, so... Wow. Uh, Clad really presented no evidence there. I think what we have to remember, too, is specifically when it comes to a murder trial. It is the burden of the prosecution to change our mind. The default, unless there is overwhelming evidence to remove any shadow of a doubt from our mind, the default judgment is always not guilty. And I can't say so far I've heard any evidence that changes that in my mind in any way. How long has he had to prepare for this case? His only real witness is a drunk? I would say that there is one other witness on the docket, but that they weren't present for this first part. And we've also not heard from Commander Voss mm -hmm. or Commander Vo. Yes, I, I... I just, at this point, I don't see the... I hope that... Something comes up in the next half because I don't see even a point for this trial. Like, there's been no real evidence presented. And all the evidence that we do have isn't reliable at all. I can't trust anything that's been said so far. Has there been any, um, progress with my check into the transporter logs? Oh, I guess we already did that. Never mind. Sorry. I'm forgetting. Yep. So, um... It is at this point uh, that, you know, mid-deliberation, um, a ensign does is allowed into the room, and she just takes a seat uh, in the, you know, sort of chairs. Um, she is wearing, uh, contrary to the token, because I'm just pulling tokens that I can at this point, um, she is wearing uh, medicine blue, so science is medicine blue, and she has the insignia of an ensign. She does not have the rifle that is in her token. That but we she, know of. But she'd be 10% cooler if she did. Eh. <laughs> Somehow I don't think Zion would back in, into the room. Are we back no, in session? Like, is it okay for her to be in here? Yeah, so the people are beginning to filter back in, so you probably have a little bit more to discuss amongst yourselves, but your your window is closing. I'm I'm just shocked that Clad doesn't seem as prepared as I would think a Klingon for this situation would be. And I still think there's more here than we know. Clad, at his opening statement, was so sure that Vo was guilty. A person that he's potentially never met, he would come to a Federation Starbase and make such a strong argument with such little evidence. Just feel like there's more here than we know. Yeah. We do know there so, is some hard evidence, but I don't necessarily know if I believe that either. I mean, that could be fabricated easily. 
it still weighs on us too that the ambassador is dead and someone on this station more than likely someone on the station is the killer true and uh, the Klingon government it, it, no matter what we see here may not accept our judgment this could be a Fortunately, huge all... moment Fortunately, all we have at this point are more questions so far the the trial has given us no answers and it is on that note that people come back into the courtroom and uh after you know after the trial is resumed uh clad stands back up and says your honors i would like to apologize for the last witness uh, my understanding is that uh, he was not a very convincing fellow so i'm hoping my next witness will help cement the facts i would like to call ensign cilia to the stand and uh and Cecilia takes the seat, identifies herself, swears in, and says, uh, For the record, I am the individual that performed the autopsy on the ambassador. And uh, Clad says, Very good. Uh, what can you tell us about the ambassador's death? Uh, well, uh, he was stabbed multiple times in the chest uh, with his own dagger. Uh, the angle of attack and the... Otherwise, uh, force that was delivered is consistent with both Commander Vo's height and with a Vulcan strength. I see, I see. And are you sure that these wounds were not self-inflicted? Uh, yes, sir. I don't think it's quite possible even for a Klingon to stab himself repeatedly in such a manner. Hmm. And how is it that uh, one can find skin cells of someone on a dagger? Uh, such as this and uh Celia thanks for a moment and says well uh you'd have to be gripping the weapon pretty hard uh you couldn't just you know grab it and throw it or you couldn't just transport the cells on there you would need to have held this dagger pretty tightly I see I see and one other thing um this dagger did it ever leave your purview um no, in fact, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how it ended up back on the Ambassador during that power loss. Uh, prior to that, I can confirm its authenticity, though. Hmm. Very well. As you can see, Your Honors, the evidence speaks for itself. There is no other way for the defendant's DNA to have been transplanted onto the dagger unless she herself was holding it. And thus, I present that it was indeed Commander Vo who was doing the stabbing. And Clad Your just sort of sits back down. Your Honors, I, I have one... Uh, I have one question for this witness. Go ahead. And Cecilia, you stated that to get skin cells transferred to this weapon, they would have to be gripping it very tightly. Yes? Uh, yes, ma'am. And perhaps I should clarify, um, obviously, when you touch something, you leave behind certain remnants of yourself, fingerprints, oils, etc. Um, the difference here is that the skin cells we collected were in the grip of the weapon, like built, not built in, but sort of cracked, not cracked, what's the word I want to use? Um jammed into the leather, almost as if something was pressed very tightly against it. I see. And how would one get skin cells onto the blade of a weapon? On the blade of a weapon? They would have had to cut themselves, sir. Um, have you treated Commander Vo or anyone in sickbay treated Commander Vo for those cuts? For those type of cuts? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Then, in your expert, and she'll look at Clad, opinion, how how or why would, not how, why would there have been skin cells from Commander Vo on the blade of a weapon that she used allegedly to stab someone? And Clad looks like he wants to say something for a moment, but then he thinks better of it. And uh, Cilia thinks for a moment and says, well, 
and of course, this is speculation, uh, your honors, uh, but it's not unheard of for personnel to have their own personal terminal regenerators. It's entirely possible for someone to cut themselves and simply handle the injury themselves. It, it wouldn't have to be a grave cut to leave skin cells behind, not on the blade. And is there any way to tell if a dermal regenerator has been used on a person? Uh, there is, yes. Uh, it would require a examination in sickbay, but it is something that can be done. And the skin cells, is there a way of telling from where on a body they came from? Yes and no. Certain skin cells, uh, for example, those found on the feet are different than those found on the hands. But in general, skin cells are skin cells. And that out of character is probably wrong, but that's what I'm going with. Um, and does... Before before I ask my next question, mm -hmm. does Zenros know... Um, mm, Zenros will walk over to Commander Vo and very quietly mm -hmm. ask her if she has used a dermal regenerator on herself recently for any reason. And it should be noted that at this point, Commander Vo has been completely stoic, unblinking, and just your stereotypical calm Vulcan. And she still is, as she answers very quietly, so that only Zenros hears, yes. Zenros is going to roll her eyes, her antenna are going to make an emotion of shit. Um... Now, you say this skin cell that was on the handle was, in your words, as if they had been crammed into the leather of the ham handle. Yes. Uh, again, maybe I should clarify. Uh, when you use something like a knife, uh, depending on the handle, sometimes as you impact your target, whatever you're trying to stab... Um, there is obviously kinetic energy transferred back up uh, through the handle, and it's almost as if you are scraping the palm of your hand across the handle. So the force that it would take to stab someone, uh, skin cells can be transferred? Correct. Now, the skin cells where you found them and how they were, would that coincide with that? I'm, I'm trying to go off the fact that you use the word crammed. Do you think, in your opinion, that someone placed these skin cells into the leather to make it look as if she had used them? Uh, no, in my professional opinion, I do believe that genuinely she was the one who was stabbing. Okay. It's an if I may. Is there any other way to put skin cells on an object apart from that person touching it? I can think of several ways, sir, but the main thing is that you would have to first collect the skin cells and then you would have to place them in such a way that would seem, quote-unquote, natural. Um, this isn't the first time I've dealt with, you know, deaths like this. Uh, I may only be an ensign, but I'm a good coroner. And I like to think I know when somebody has planted evidence. I, I don't believe that is the case here. Um, I have a question of Zines that I would like to see if I can pull up from the from my pad. Mm -hmm. Being and and here's my justification for this: mm -hmm. being Zines ha, is focused in hand to hand combat and also has the trait of the Ushan. Yep. So he's no stranger to hand to hand fighting with bladed weapons. Mm -hmm. There was no defensive wounds. There was no defensive wounds. On a Klingon who is being stabbed by someone, Zines would like to look up and see maybe a medical record or training that Ambassador uh, Hulash has. Trying to get like the idea of whether or not uh, Hulash, like, why didn't he defend himself? Okay. Um... I would say that this would be a, yeah, for you, it would be an insight medicine. Oh, and 
Apologies if jet noise is leaking through. Um, I would say this would be a difficulty of three. Okay, well, seeing as how uh, my veteran worked and worked well, I'm going to blow my determination again. Okay. Um, for the same value, no okay. stranger to... Or, I'm sorry, uh, actually, no, I'll use that one instead. No stranger to violence, because it seems um, story with where I'm going with this. Okay. Um, uh, and applicable focus, hand-to-hand -hand combat? Yep. God damn it. So that is a success, Oof. but it is with a complication. Um, now you can... No, no, you can't buy it off. Um, then I... I have an idea for a complication for it. Sure. That Zion's got the information in a back-channel way that maybe a Klingon intelligence person will see that a Commander Zion's is looking up information in the Klingon database. I think that's fair. Uh, what you're going to find out is that this, what I just PM'd you, is probably the only time a Klingon would allow this to happen. So you PM'd it. That means it has to be juicy. Mm -hmm. Zines, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this for Zarya and obviously Zenros will get it too. Zines' antenna droop. Like, I, I almost want to say saddened. Like, what he just read kind of saddened him. And then he will send it to... Uh, the judges, not to Zenros, just to the judges. Okay. Um, and I will post that link in our Discord. Mm -hmm. And sorry for the people just listening or people watching for that matter. It will um, become very evident for those listening or watching. It's it's pretty juicy. Um, We're going to keep the secret. <laughs> and he and when he sends it, he's gonna kind of give a. Like, his face is, is also saddened when he kind of looks at Zarya. And it's in Discord. With just a another word that he's typed in, the word ritual and a question mark. Um... And then after letting them have a minute, then he'll ask Miller, um, uh, Your Honor, permission to uh, give this to both councils? Yes, number one. I, I I think this is some relevant, very relevant information. And Zines will um, walk over to Zenros and give it to her, and then after she reads it, then he'll walk over to Clad and give it to Clad. And then he will stand in front of Clad. Clad, in... uh, Clad actually reads it and isn't phased in the slightest. And then I'm just gonna stare at Clad for a good long second. Stares back I, in that in that Klingon way. And I would... I It's my worst stats ever, but can I make that same insight con check to read his poker face about whether or not he knew or thought that this is what it was the entire time. Yes, uh, I would say this would be a difficulty of five, though. So it is a very difficult thing. Uh, there, there's no way I can make it. Even with uh, full threat and determination? If I throw everything into this roll, yes, there's a possibility I could do it. So... Sure. Um, you want insight and con? Mm -hmm. I could. I, I would give you insight command, maybe. Like there, there's arguments for command. Um, no, I'm good with con. Con's actually better for me. Uh, the insight part is the crappy part. Nah. Um, but okay, then I will give you threat. Okay. Um, how much threat do I want to give you? Is there, is there any way you would consider this a hostile situation? 
I would say that based what you just got, mm, excuse me, um, it could be construed as hostile. Uh, Zines definitely is in a uh, tense uh, posture and bearing. Um, but I would also remind you that uh, Miller, do you not have? Did we already roll for your veteran? Yeah, I didn't. Get didn't get it back. Okay. Uh, that means you can't just give him your determination. Yeah, um, what I was going to try to sell you on was perhaps an assist where I... Let me think, try to throw something designs like a... Where are you going with this, Commander, sort of thing, to see if we could... If I could give you another dice and assist. I'll let it happen. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's fair to let that What happen. if I were to assist instead, since I have insightful guidance? Ooh. Oh, much better. Yes, let's have that happen. And I would like to do exactly what Miller just said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just pass it off. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and roll oh. your assist, and then we'll know what uh, what Zines has to pull off here. Awesome. Should I just do the same thing, or...? Uh, so remind me what Insightful Guidance actually does. Oh, when I assist a character who is in a social conflict using my knowledge of psychology or emotional states, that character is considered to have an advantage in addition to the normal benefits provided by my assist. Okay, so then the difficulty goes down to a four, and you would sure. be rolling one dice for your insight medicine. Um, then I will give you... <laughs> and Focus, yes? Focus, yes. And Miller just put up... Oh, no. <laughs> ooh. Oh. Uh, An attempt see. was made. Um, I... Yeah. Is... I can't is, use my talents. Is threat... Um, buying dice for threat the same as momentum? Yep, exactly the numbers, the I mean. Same. Okay, then I will spend... Uh, two threat to go all the way up to four... No, I have to spend three fret. Mm -hmm. Three fret. Oh my god. <laughs> three threat to go up to four dice. Okay. Um, and I'll hold my determination in case I need to reroll. Okay. Um, and applicable focus, probably not. Pitch um, me one. I, I might give it to you. Um, Phasers. No, here's a good, <laughs> here's a good one. Uh, teaching. I know when students are lying to me. You do? I'll give it to you. All right, yeah. so that's two successes. All right, then I'll I'll burn a determination and to get the two other successes. Well, um, the, to get the other two successes, you would have had to do it before the dice were rolled, but okay. you can use the determination to re-roll those two zeros. Okay, then I will do that. Um... I don't know which deter which value I want to get rid of. Um, because you only get veteran once per session, correct? No, veteran just keeps rolling over. Oh, so then let me re-roll to see if I got my original determination back. Uh, yeah, that's why veteran's good is nope. you can just keep right. using it. Um, then I will. Uh, hesitation is as bad as is as bad as inaction. Okay. And I will reroll those two zeros. Inside. Yeah, that value might become something like, uh, you know, maybe hesitation is something better or worse. You know, subtle twist on it. And there we two go. Two successes. That's all you need. He knew. <clears throat> I'm going to continue to stare at him and... Your honors, uh, this whole trial is is a waste of time. The Klingons knew exactly what was going on, and the Klingons, especially this one, and I'm going to point a finger at Clad's chest, uh, knew exactly well that uh, Ambassador Hulash was wanting to go through the ritual known as Hegbat. Ritual suicide. And Commander Bo helped him. So there is no murder here. And I look to Commander Bo. Commander, 
Is is that true? And again, calm, stoic Vulcan. She says, yes. And clad, almost as if like he doesn't quite understand why everyone is like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. He's like, but why was this not conducted in his quarters? Why the secrecy? There's more at play here. Do you Federation types not see it? I, I think I know. And, and Mr. Clad, I believe you know as well. So out of character question, which I think is pretty key here, mm -hmm. the Federation is, at this time, is assisted suicide, if is consensual suicide crime. I believe like, if you help someone suicide themselves, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, if you help them commit suicide, is that a... I believe Euthanasia? technically it is, but it's fuzzy because the only time we learn about the Hegbot um, is when, uh, I think it's Ethics. Yes, it's the episode of Ethics where, you know, Worf asks Riker to bring him the dagger, and when Riker refuses... He says that the only other person who could do it was Alexander. Um, my understanding is also coming from the episode where they do the Mokhtak Vor between Worf and Kern, where Odo really wanted to bring, you know, Worf up on charges um, because he tried to kill his brother Kern. Um, but I forget the nuance of why Odo let him off. No, this isn't. This is pro. This is just speculation. Um, but I would assume that like medically assisted dying is likely normal in the Federation. Um, but having someone else that's not a doctor do it is completely strange and foreign. And that's why having like Riker do it or Worf do it seems like murder. Right, I think that's the key to especially yeah, when they're healthy. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Um, sounds all right. I, I'm designed to look to Commander Vo. Um, actually, no, I'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, Commander Zinros will look at Vo and ask, honestly, what was your relation with the ambassador? Before we get to that, Commander, do we have any further questions for Insincilla here? Just to confirm, how many wounds did the ambassador suffer? Three, sir. Three. Okay. Vincent, in your professional opinion, um, well, first of all, a, a question. What's your knowledge of Klingon anatomy? I could probably tell you where they keep their <laughs> redundant organs, sir, but it's not like I'm an expert. Okay. Since you replied to the court that you are not an expert, my next question next question, I believe, is irrelevant. Thank you. Uh, sir, not to challenge that, but if you are about to ask what I think you're going to ask, the reason I believe there were three stab wounds is because it was needed in order to hit both hearts and the spine. <sighs> Well, Ensign, now that we've established you're not an expert, I still would like to hear your opinion. Why would someone attack a Klingon in those three specific... Well, uh, if the commander here is right, pointing at Zines, uh, the Hegbot performed by someone else uh, inexperienced with Klingon anatomy, they would have to be told where to strike. Whereas a Klingon knows exactly where to kill himself. So what you're saying, if I get this right, is that the wounds that you've seen would be wounds inflicted by a Klingon or someone as equally familiar with exactly how to kill a Klingon. Uh, no, perhaps I misspoke. Um, I mean to say that the wounds were consistent with someone who was being told uh, where to stab, whereas a Klingon would have only one stab wound needed. I think I understand, Ensign. Thank you. And yeah, unless anyone has any other questions, the Ensign is uh, left off of the stand and leaves the room. 
And now at this point, I believe our last witness is the witness we'd all most like to hear. Commander Vo. Mm -hmm. So Commander Vo uh, comes up to the sand, identifies herself, swears in, and then just waits patiently for questions. Uh, then uh, Zen Ross will ask the question she asked a moment ago, and what is your actual relations with, uh, with the ambassador? My grandfather owes his family a blood debt, a blood debt that he came to collect. To help to assist him in the Hegbach. Correct. So you assisted a man to perform ritual suicide upon himself and did not murder him out of any other re any reason. That is correct. Is and there any reason why you didn't tell us this before? She looks very pointedly at Zarya and says, He was a private man. I am also a private woman. I did not feel it relevant. It was a decision we made together. Commander, a death on the station is still a death, whether you deem it re relevant or not. You are duty bound in your role as a Starfleet officer to not only carry the values and laws of Starfleet, but also to report them when they are violated. I understand, sir. And it is only logical that you punish me for dereliction of duty in this aspect. Um... Zenros. What? Oh, go ahead. Why did you find it necessary to, to hide this? Like, you hid it even after the fact. You waited until 0700 to say that you found him in your room. That is something I do not know to this day why he was in the room. When we committed the Hechtbach, it was in his quarters. I did not move the body. Did anyone else know of the plan that you two had? No, it was, again, a private matter. Um, uh, I'm going to have Zines go through the computer system again mm -hmm. and see if there's any... If I can find any evidence of transporter logs being uh, expunged. Okay, uh, that's going to be an insight engineering at a difficulty of three. God damn it. I, can I he mean, call upon weak ass to assist him? Yeah, weak ass can assist him. Yeah, yeah weak, weak can ass can do the roll if you, uh, if you would prefer weak yes. ass to roll. Yes, yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my insight eight engineering one. Absolutely. Nice. Insi weak you said insight weak. engineering? Correct, yes. yes. And he has a that focus of transporters? Yep. Signs, you've gotten a lot of mileage out of that insight score this uh, this session. Uh, I know, right? So, uh, Zines, need the assist. You, yeah, Zines, I need you to literally roll a one here in order to succeed on this. Um, I would like to give you uh, a threat for a dice. Okay. Actually, no, you can't because you're assisting. Oh shit! And no applicable focuses. No focuses. So we got to see a one here. Nope. Oh, <sighs> not a one. So, unfortunately, if there was any expunging, uh, it's not being picked up. <sighs> it was an idea. Um, Mr. Mister Clad, do you have any questions for the commander? Kind of interested to see what he has to say. So, Clad has been very tight-lipped since this whole heck bot has come to light, and he says... No, but I believe in Federation law that this is still counted as a murder under your roof, I believe is the expression. Therefore, we still move that Commander Vo be remitted to my custody to a penal colony. Mr. Clad, um, in Klingon society, is there... Is the this ceremony ever committed with someone else 
stabbing or murdering the other per not murdering um assisting the other person in this act of suicide he just looks at you very pointedly and says there are times yes so in klingon society would that be considered a normal act um even if it is infrequent He just sort of shrugs and says, I think you've missed the point here. It does not matter if it's normal for a Klingon. The fact remains that Commander Vo has killed the ambassador, has admitted to it. <sighs> Mr. Clyde, if, if I may, you've stated that the punishment, if we were to give you Commander Vo, would be her sentencing to a life sentence at the penal colony of Warapente. Uh, uh, punishment that is very very harsh just one step down from the death penalty in klingon society so i have to ask you if she did commit this crime if she did execute the heck on the ambassador is that a punishment that klingon society fits for that crime it was my understanding that the heck was an honorable way to commit a a warrior at the end of his life why such a harsh punishment for what would otherwise be an honorable act because, as has been revealed, it was not honorable. It was not the ambassador himself who stabbed the dagger. It was Commander Vo. Therefore, the entire is... ceremony was for naught. I want to pull up Vo's psychological profile. Okay. What are you looking for? I just want to see... Um... What do I want to see? I want to see why she didn't necessarily tell us. I know that she's private and he's private and she wouldn't want to reveal his honor or dishonor, however you want to flavor it. I want to see if there's a reason behind that. Okay. Uh, that's going to be an insight medicine, a uh, difficulty of two. And you do have a focus. All right. So with two successes... Um, I would say that really what stands out to you is, again, she was the head JAG officer for the station, and that's an assignment you don't get lightly. So it's something where she knows how you're supposed to act and how you're supposed to respond to situations like this. And she also knows how to properly defend against it. So everything that you're seeing and everything that she's done so far is consistent with a lawyer that is not defending themselves, but knows not to self-incriminate themselves. That's fair. Um, I want to ask, sorry, I, I want to ask. It seems like she didn't necessarily believe that it was right then, even though she was doing it, if she's keeping it private, if she thinks that it's like helping and being honorable and repaying a debt, I don't don't see why she wouldn't say that. Continue, Riley. Is this a trial for... Is she on trial for murder? Mm -hmm. Or is this a trial for extradition? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a double whammy. Okay. So you're going to rule on whether or not she did commit the murder, and then you decide whether or not she gets extradited. So that helps out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Commander Vo, Mr. Cloud has just said that you did not perform the ritual correctly, which invalidates it in Klingon society. I'm interested in what you have to say about that. The ambassador died with a smile on his face, thanking me for relieving him of a great pain. It may not be correct in Klingon society, but it is only logical that such a relief of pain is still considered a selfless act. Commander what Bell, exactly was uh, his pain? Oh, sorry. My no. understanding was is that he had a debilitating genetic disease that caused him constant pain, constant agony, through every waking moment with no cure available. It simply grew to the point that he could no longer stand it. 
Um, I'm gonna, as Zines, I'm gonna send a message to Zarya asking, with that kind of debilitating thing, could it possibly be that he couldn't even lift up the knife himself to do it himself? And the answer to that is yes. I will respond to Zines via the pad. And then Zines will, I don't know, send her back a, a winky face or something like <laughs> you're on to something. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what? I'll, I'll keep that information for later. We're going to have a discussion. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, Commander, um, at 2100, you left your office and sealed it. And then when you returned at 0700, that's when the body was found. And you did not expect that. Um, when exactly was the ambassador killed? And where exactly? Uh, 2130, in his quarters. In his quarters. Have and does now that I turn... time of death match the like? Yes, it does. Autopsy information. Okay. It does. And commander, there's been evidence of skin cells on the blade of the knife that was used to kill the ambassador. Can you explain that? Are you familiar with the Klingon ritual? I do not remember the name of it. Where you cut your hand and dribble some blood into a cup. There's many rituals like it. I honestly do not know of it. But the ambassador insisted on it. Um, oh, uh, I picked up on something too. Zines will send a message to Miller with the heckbot and the highlighted portion of the second for the ritual wipes the blood off on their sleeve. So she could have possibly gotten it that way too. Mm -hmm. I have a question for actually for Commander Gironos. Mm -hmm. Was a thorough inspection done of the ambassador's quarters for blood or evidence of acts occurring there? Um, because if the murder occurred there, there should be um, some sort of evidence. She starts looking at a pad because I don't know and mumbles something about if there wasn't one, then my chief of security is going to be in a big trouble. Your chief of security is in a lot of trouble. Probably she your looks chief up, engineer too. She looks up at um, the, um, to the judges and especially to Miller and go and says, captain, can I uh, requisition your chief of security and your chief engineer to stand as mine? Because it seems like I'm probably going to need one of each shortly. We'll deal with that shortly, Commander Zenros. There's a lot of things, a lot of questions still remain. But it just occurred to me, Commander Vo, and I, I want to make it completely clear what I'm asking you. So if it's not clear, let me know. Are you confessing, understanding the full weight of what that confession means? Are you confessing to murdering the ambassador by your hand? And by that, I mean you stabbed him, and when you left the ambassador, he was dead. Yes. I, uh, Riley shakes his head, um, both in, like, he's both disappointed, but also in agreement with Miller that I understand what Miller's saying there. And Commander Zinros, I have one question for you. And if you need to gather more information from your staff, I understand. Are we 100% without a shadow of a doubt certain that the body that we have in sickbay is, is the ambassador's body? Uh, to the best of my knowledge... It is, but I can absolutely check, and hopefully I don't need a chief medical officer as well. Uh, if you will allow me a moment to have that checked. Yes, Commander, take all the time you need. All the information uh, that you can give us. And Zenros is going to step outside, mm -hmm. hit her calm, 
contact her chief medical officer and have them do the test while she is basically on the phone with them. Okay. And I'll say, let's, uh, to the court, let's take a five minute recess while we're waiting for those results. I'd like to confer with the other members of the panel. Okay. So, uh, non panel members step out and you guys can deliberate on the panel. What do you think? She's I have just a question. Confessed under oath. I have a question. Um, does, with the recent signing of the Kitamura Accords, does the Federation have a extradition policy with the Klingon Empire? Um, that's something I wasn't 100% able to find one way or the other, because obviously they were able to throw Kirk and McCoy into Ruapente, but there's not any solid information about a... You know, sort of like how the U.S. and Canada, like, you can just throw people across the border for the police services and they're fine. I don't know what that is for the Klingon Empire. So let's say that this would probably be the first post- Precedent setting. Yeah, precedent setting. Shoot. I believe I have an idea on sentencing if we indeed rule that she is guilty. I feel like you may... Pardon me for saying this, Captain. You may have asked a little bit of a leading question there, I think, because we know we know her interpretation of the events. It doesn't necessarily, if she was performing this ritual, it might not necessarily go under the purview of murder exactly, like first degree murder. There might be room for interpretation there. I I completely agree, Commander. And that was the nature of what I meant by sentencing. What I needed to know, and it was not clear, which is why I asked her so directly, was if she actually performed the murder, that is a crime. I think when it comes to sentencing, we'll have to decide whether it's in fact murder or Mm -hmm. conduct and becoming a Starfleet officer, which is what I'm leaning to. But we needed to know if she actually killed him, which before that was still a question. She admitted to it. I was leaning that way before you asked asked that question, and the way it sounds is like this was pre-planned, premeditated. She is a JAG officer. She's a Starfleet officer. She's very, very familiar with the law. She took those actions understanding the repercussions. And, she is admitted uh, to withholding information and not coming out to report the, the murder or the, the ritual, as it were. And because it might affect your deliberations, uh, Zinros does reply with an answer. The body they have in the morgue is a clone. Oh, what the okay. fuck? I, Riley says that out loud. I, <laughs> I was going to bring up the fact that in some of the legal precedent that we have, not necessarily um, on all planets of the Federation, but I do know on Earth in particular, assisted suicide is sometimes punished as manslaughter, not necessarily murder. Which might be an important distinction to make, especially if we are extraditing her. Was the clone... Is the clone just a corpse? Like, was it alive and then killed? Is there any way of telling that at all? Um, It would require a further autopsy, but the time it would take to do would be probably quite a while um, because they have to do a very in-depth cellular scan. But to sort of speed things along, I will say that preliminary scans show that this was a flash clone, that it never had sentience, it never had brain activity, it literally was okay. just a bunch of organs pumping blood around. Then we don't have a murder anymore. We don't have a body anymore. Was the... Can I have weak ass check to see if that... That transport at... Um, oh, 200. At 2130. Uh, it was at 2130, I think, the transport... No, 2130 is when the ambassador dies, supposedly. Yeah. 
The transport occurs at the same time as the sick babe thing with the conduit being replaced at 0200. Okay. Um, I want to know. I Why don't are they care. replacing the conduit at 0200? And why wasn't it routed through backups? These are all good questions. Questions that um, would have been good for Mr. Morgan. <laughs> I mean, we can always call him back. Yeah, you can. I want to know if weak ass can look at the logs and, and go over it and see if that transport c contained any sort of genetic material at all. All right. I need him to roll me a reason engineering difficulty of four. And because no... he has been activated, you can give him a focus, a talent, or a value. Or you could increase one of his scores. So this might be a good time to give him a value. That way he yep. can use the creation. Uh, I would like to give him a value. Um, do I have to be specific with the value at this very moment? Uh, it has to be something applicable to this moment, yes. It's going to be something about how he values the... He values the uh, detailed record-keeping above all else. Uh, let's say meticulous record-keeping is paramount. Mm. And if you spell it right the first time, good on you, because I couldn't. Words. I think I did. <laughs> I think I did. Um, okay, he's he's going to instantly use that value. Okay, so that'll start you to, off with two successes. And then it's reason engineering with yeah. a focus in transporters. Yep. And can I give you threat to get... Uh, it would cost two threat for an additional dice on this. I will give you that threat. Okay. Wow. That's uh, <clears throat> six successes, uh, which means you get a grand total of, what did I say? Two momentum back. And yeah, weak ass doing weak ass's job. Uh, he doesn't weak ass it. He finds out that not only was there genetic material contained within that transport log, but that the cargo that was transported was then transported to the Denobulan freighter. Is that freighter still here? Nope, it's gone. No, it's gone. Well, you know, I could hope that there was a second freighter, you know. <laughs> the commander seemed so very... Ca the captain brought this up right away about that freighter, and, and the commander seemed very laissez-faire about letting it go it's just oh we checked the records but whatever well the one thing i would say on that is you have to keep in mind here that the commander has just found out that her not only is her chief engineer like super like not good but apparently her chief of security has not been doing their job either so that, she, that all falls on her. It does, but, you know, I, I just, you know, got to give her a little bit here. Well, Clad said that the reason the Hecbot ritual was invalid in their eyes was because it was performed incorrectly. And as do we know if the body he looked at to make that determination, that was the clone body, right? Yeah, well, that's the theory. There, There's two bodies here, and that's sort of the question. Or maybe he knows, question. he knows that the ambassador's alive, maybe. Or he's made that determination on the clone body, not knowing that it was a clone. Bring that up to him. Because I think what we're unraveling is there's not actually a crime as far as the Klingons. And the story of the killing itself, she didn't specify how many stab wounds there were. So, like... Maybe there were three. Maybe there was one. Maybe there were... Two. Can I burn momentum I and know. ask a question? Sure. Was that genetic material Klingon? Yes, it was. Can I get more specific? It was the ambassadors. 
Thank you. I'll, burn all, I'll, I'll consider that two momentum spends. Nah, just one, because it's just a question. Um, well, we have that evidence now. Um, how many days has that freighter been gone? Uh, approximately a week. How fast is it compared to the Akagi? I would say that... Uh... Based on standard Nobulan freighters, they go about, what, warp 5, warp 6? The Akagi could probably track it down pretty easily if it followed its past flight plan. That's on my call, Captain. Yeah, uh, hey, hey, number one. I'll pull my communicator. Hey, number one. Uh, I've got something I need you to do. I think he's AFK. Uh, oh, no, no I'm back. Um... Go ahead, Captain. Uh, what can I do for you? There's a Denobulan freighter out there. I need you to catch it immediately. Under no circumstances can that thing get away. Understood. You want me to bring it back so that way we can find something on it, I'm guessing? Uh, let's say when you find that freighter, uh, put everyone in question. You know what? It's been one of those days. Everyone in question in the brig and tow the ship back. And keep it under guard. Uh, will do, Captain. Uh, heading to the uh, heading to the Akagi now. All right. And I tell you uh, what, uh, this actually seems like a perfect opportunity to call the session because you have a lot of thinking to do, and I have to write uh, the whole uh, Denobulan freighter encounter. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, you know, Give this it is to us now. Well, technically, you don't because you could just have it have happened because I'm not going to be here next session. Right. Ah, uh, okay. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um. I mean, I promise I won't shoot to air quotes disable it like I did well, the Federation ship and almost destroy it. We could do this. Zines is part of this investigation. Maybe. It's the other part of the crew that has to do this encounter. Uh, yeah, we could I think do that a would lower be fair. Yeah, yeah, that that would uh, that would give some supporting characters some time to uh, sort of get the spotlight. We could learn a little bit about them. Is Barkley the commanding officer with all of us down here? No. Uh, Jensen <laughs> is, I think. So the uh, cat's not in charge. No, unless you promoted the cat without me knowing. I mean, uh, I'd love to promote the cat. I would deny any promotion the cat is put up for. <laughs> um, no, you weren't here. You weren't here for that. We oh. we uh, promoted the cat to Admiral. Oh, uh, why was the cat the one that was actually killing all the spiders? Yes, it the cat one. did defend the, the cat. Captain. Tried his best. Okay. <laughs> I, I think factually it was me, but um, everyone says it's the cat. No. I, I just want for anybody who will watch this VOD or knows anything about ELH's universe, let this sink in. Jensen is the captain. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Jensen's the cat, too. They've never been in the same room. Oh, dear. I'm comfortable giving weak-ass command of the ship. He, he's our star player. He's only a crewman. We'll we'll, uh, I, I, we'll figure out ranks <laughs> later. But, he has a value. He can be the captain. Yeah, he could be the captain now. Oh, All right. It's probably Cerule, actually. Yeah, it might be Cerule. Uh, Talin is another good option, because I think Talin is, what, a lieutenant? Vran's uh, a lieutenant. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Uh, but the point being, but this will give you guys some time to think of more questions. It'll give me time to write down more information. And that way it'll seem more consistent. And we'll, we'll figure out where to go from there. Um, so players stick around for just a little bit longer. But to anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc., thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see these guys in two weeks' time. Hell of a cliffhanger. Bye-bye, stream.